let's say cobalt oxide, in the little cobalt oxide, the cobalt element is quite expensive. So researchers try to reduce this price by replacing other expensive elements that losing its performance. So they replace cobalt by nickel manganese or nickel aluminum. They are called NMC and NCA in the past few lectures. And all of the three has similar structure. Transition metal is surrounded by six oxygen. Lithium is also surrounded by six oxygen. Those two octahedrons share their edges and form transition metal layer, lithium layer. And they alternate one by one and form huge layered structure. <coughs> Here, lithium ion is a moving, major moving part. So I will present lithium as a, just a standalone ball. But uh, just remember, this is also coordinated by six oxygen and in both hydroxide. <clears throat> During charging, and from now on, I will mention charging as a deletiation because for the positive electrode, charging of the battery is the same as deletiation of the lithium. If we deletiate the lithium in the positive electrode, we also lose the electron, then for the charging neutrality, some species should be oxidized in the material. Here, transition metal, nickel cobalt manganese, they should oxidize. And you can see here, they just change its oxidation state at their position. Please remember this. And here comes the question how much we can extract, how much we can deletiate? More deletiation means we have more capacity. This one is a schematic diagram of band structure in the positive electrode. During <coughs> deletiation, let's say we deletiate 50% of the lithium, then we extract the electron from 3D transition metal. The Fermi energy from the Fermi energy indicates the highest level of the uh, electron. Uh, up to this point, deletiation, charging, and deletiation in the battery is discharging air from the person. We cannot see any significant change in the structure. But if we release it even more, let's say we extract 90%, 90% of the lithium out of 100, then we need to extract more electron. From this point, we access electron. Not only change the metal, we also extract the electron from the oxygen. Then oxygen ion oxidizes and form oxygen gas and it leaves the structure. The structure becomes unstable. As you can see, from that point, it shows oxygen evolution, and this layered structure turned into non-layered structure. I will briefly mention why layered structure is good, because, because of layered structure has two dimensions and two layers. It has really, really good lithium ion mobility, even in the room temperature. But you can see, those transient matter is right now blocked, two dimensional layers. This is uh, one of the stable form of the uh, north layer structure is spinning phase, like this. Uh, this is not deserved. Here, I'm not saying that all of the known layer structure is bad, but in most of the case, it should slower due to my rigidity, lower capacity, and shows different approach uh, behavior. So this change is not deserved. We want to keep structure like layer structure. I mentioned deletiation is the same as charging the battery. Too much deletiation is the same as overcharging. If we do overcharging, you can see capacity fades rapidly and the cycle goes. So this is evidence that Lunar's layer structure is worse than layer structure. And here I can see structure determine the property. Structure property relationship is not only important in my study, but also important in all of the natural science. But today, I will mainly say, uh, talk, uh, talk about structure property relation in the positive electron. Because of that undesired phase transformation from layer to low layer, people, call, uh, people set critical capacity. Usually, they extract 0 0.7 or at most 0 0.7 lithium out of 1 lithium. This is a critical capacity of three different classical electrode material. But you can see from 1991 to 2019, 
there has been no huge improvement in the practical capacity. We need more capacity for every grid storage or all other applications. There is another promising material is to access layer oxide. You can see its theoretical capacity, capacity, capacity is way higher than those three possible vectors. It is that there is oxide as similar, they are the same layer structure, but slightly different. Some of the structure matter is replaced by this as you can see here. Then what is the feature of lithium pieces material in terms of this problem? Oh, this is how long I mentioned this lithium excess layer oxide as lithium excess material, and those three NCO and NC and CA passive electrode as conventional uh, uh, passive electrode. This is electrochemical profile of the most uh, famous lithium plus oxide. This is electrochemical profile of lithium excess NC material. There are 1.17 of lithium. The top line represents the initiation. The bottom line represents the initiation. You can see in both material, we initiate about one lithium. In both cases, as I mentioned in the previous slide, it is called overturn too much initiation. To remind you, in lithium cobalt oxide, it shows a huge capacity effect. Then what happens in the lithium excess, that's the lithium excess material? I will show slightly in other way. Uh, in deletion, the capacity here is about 270. The blue curve in the second cycle during deletion, its capacity is almost the same. And even after 500 cycles, the capacity is very maintained. It is surprising. So we can say lithium system up here is good in the capacity retention. But so far, still, nobody can eat exactly explain why it shows good capacity retention. This material is, by the way, really nice, but cannot be commercialized because you can see there's another problem. As cycle goes, the average initiation voltage is going down. Usually, most of the device set the operation window by measuring voltage. If voltage changes during operation, it's hard to estimate what is the state of the battery. To understand that, I think understanding why it has a good capacity retention should, come, uh, should be solved first. So today I will find what is the redox mechanism in the lithium excess material. What is the difference between conventional and classic electron? As I mentioned before, I will mainly focus on what is structure and property relation in the lithium excess material. This is my online today. First, I will talk about, I will study the understanding uh, the lithium mechanism in the lithium resistance material. And then, from uh, my uh, understanding, in my first session, I will try to optimize synthesis condition to control structure and property. At the end, I will uh, give up guidance. What is the way to improve performance of the bat? Let's start my first part. As a model system to study how redox, uh, redox work, I set three different model systems. First model system is the lithium excess NFC material. This is a chemical formula. This is a structure. This is practically really important because this material can be commercialized. This one is an expensive element and also it should be very good because of chemical performance. But there is a downside. There are three trade methods. It is not easy to understand. It is that Structural behavior, there are many change methods. So we set two more uh, model, uh, model structures. Lithium excess, we use lithium oxide, lithium excess, lithium oxide. You can see the number of the change methods reduced from 3 to 2, even to 1. So it makes it easy to understand the structural behavior. All of them, as same, their structure, a slightly different local environment. So those three model systems you should understand where there is a common behavior in all lithium system materials, and if there is a difference, what uh, is different you can find from three different model systems. So let's go on to the first model system. This uh, lithium is an NMC material. This work is mainly done together with here. 
This is the nitrogen cap profile, the initiation and initiation during first cycle. And this is accumulated capacity. This S X is represent lithium contents. So you can see lithium becomes the lowest at the end of the initiation of step. And measured structure and state of each element at separate point during cycle. And for the structural analysis, I mainly use X-ray diffraction. And to understand the state of each element, I use X-ray optical spectroscopy. I will talk about how I did the structural analysis. This is a model system of uh, lithium-resist layer, uh, lithium material. And I did X-ray diffraction pattern simulation from this ideal structure. X-ray diffraction is like a fingerprint of the material. If the structure changes, X-ray diffraction pattern changes its intensity, position, and location. And there are many ways of the structure changes, but here we made a model of 30 centimeter migration. This model says 30 centimeter can migrate from its original site to the little layer. This is also called 30 centimeter at this site. In this case, the structure changes like this. Then I did a uh, simulation, actually different simulation at different amount of tangent migration. In the bracket, in the actual differential pattern, those in the first and the fourth are fifth are the most sensitive to those changes and we made by them. There's a one, zero, one, zero, four in the bracket. And see how the <coughs> changes I introduced more and more tangent migration. As you can see, some of the intends to go down, some of them goes up. It means that if we measure X-ray diffraction very, very carefully, we can calculate back what is the tension metal at this side effect, how much the tension migrate from by doing linear regression. This method is called retrograde refinement. So I will show retrograde refinement measured at different points during the initiation and initiation. Let's start with the precinct state in the beginning. And this is a rich vector refinement <laughs> in the precinct state. You can see the first and the fifth, the data and the fitting match really well. It means that we capture the area range between those two quite uh, successfully. And the rich, rich vector refinement says there is already 3% of tension metal on this side, tension metal migration, even in the precinct state. And during the initiation, we measure several more points. Transmitter and decide to change up to this point of the initiation. But suddenly, it increased a lot, linearly. And during initiation, the transmitter and decide goes down, comes back. So from structural analysis first, we found structural migration happens, and second, it is reversible. Then let's see at the same point, what is the state of each element? This is a schematic of molecular orbiter. What y axis is the energy at a uh, specific alpha element? If we irradiate X ray, and X ray energy is enough, we can excite core electron on occupied molecular orbiter. By changing, uh, irradiating X ray energy, we can excite this electron at different level of an occupied orbiter and see what is the molecular structure of specific element. This is called X-ray absorption spectroscopy, and this is a good way to understand the oxidation state or the transition method. There is one more advanced technique. If there is empty hole, there's hole on the in the core state, those field electrons can decay to the core level. And they during the process they emit specific X-ray, characteristic X-ray. If we detect that and distinguish those energy, we can we can have more information to understand the uh, band structure, uh, uh, molecular orbital structure as specific elements. This is called resonance in elastic X-ray scattering. And in the next slide, I will show what is the example, how it looks like. This is risk map, risk analysis in the oxygen cage because we are interested in the right now oxygen and x, y axis represents excitation energy, changing the energy of the the x-ray and the x axis represents the emission energy. 
In the freezing state, this one is first, for example, reference point of ocean, uh, ocean loose map. In the middle of the deviation, we can see the peak position slightly changes, but there is no big difference in the shape. Once again, more than the deviated state, we can see this isolated feature is coming up. In the, at the end of the deviation, this feature, isolated feature, becomes even brighter. When we deviate uh, hot lithium set material again, this feature goes away. Then what is that feature means? We need a DFT calculation to understand what is that feature at full charge state, this is that feature. We are interested in oxygen and we found that this lithium peroxide material, this is the structure of lithium peroxide, has distinctive feature of oxygen. You can see in the physical structure, some of the oxygen has short form. This is uh, it has O2, 2 minus K, it has a shorter on the length than other oxide in other than other oxide in the other oxide material. And we did the simulation, root simulation with lithium peroxide, which has O2 2 minus species, and this is a simulation. You can see that isolated by feature at the same energy, in the same excitation map, uh, excitation energy and energy. So we can say lithium is an empty material in the fully elicited state has oxidized oxygen feature, uh, like peroxide. This is one of the examples. Then let's put together social analysis and the risk analysis. In the beginning, there is a little bit of training and migration, no oxygen results. This is a standard point. And with, from SL absorption spectroscopy, we found that in the beginning of initiation, tritium metal oxidized first. During that point, tritium metal and side effect don't change that much, ocean also does not change oxidized. From this point, tritium metal starts oxidized further, and we found Oxygen oxidation state uh, goes up. Uh, by, uh, I forgot to um, mention one thing. By uh, calculating the intensity of the isolated feature in the mix map, you can calculate why is, how much oxidized oxygen in the material. So, this is how we made this plot. And the matter also goes up, and during this reaction, also then goes down. So, here we found there is reversible oxygen loops unlike ocean or gas evolution in the conventional gas structure when we did lithium about one lithium. And also reversible transition metal is also important uh, uh, observed as you can see those trends there is strong correlation, strong correlation between transition metal migration and ocean oxidation. This one says uh, so I can say structure transition metal migration changes property of ocean oxidation. So this is what I found with my first model system, lithium excess material. And let's move on to the next model system, lithium excess heat uranium oxide. We are curious whether we can see the same trend, tension metal oxidation relation, and why now we change in this material, we change the composition of uranium and tin uh, and change the structure. And how they change the structure by doping affect the property. This study made was mainly done by uh, uh, collaborators of Jian and Will. The assays they present lithium contents uh, in lithium lithium oxide material, and this is pure lithium lithium oxide. With X-ray absorption spectroscopy, we, uh, we confirmed iridium changes its oxidation state from 4 plus to 5.5 plus from beginning the end. Then, there is nothing should be oxidized other than uranium. We confirmed as a uh, risk map. As you can see in the risk map, there is no isolated, isolated feature but observed in the oxidized ocean in the lithium as NMC material. Also, from retributive refinement, there is no transition metal migration. This one confirmed if there is no transition metal, no ocean oxidation happens. Uh, and this is quite reversible, maybe because there's no ocean middle, and we can see there's a two plateau region. 
because it shows two different two phase behavior. In the beginning, it uh, shows all uh, specific setting to another setting to the other setting. They have three different phases and shows reversible two phase behaviors. And we prepared two more lithium system material. Lithium 75, Tim 25, lithium 50, Tim 50. Here, I want to mention that tin is electrochemically inactive. It can only have 4 plus oxidation state, while pyridium can change oxidation state from 4 plus to 5.5 plus. And this is how electrochemical profile looks like. And again, with X ray oxygen spectroscopy, we confirm <coughs> pyridium also changes its oxidation state from 4 plus to 5.5 plus. Because there are different contents of pyridium, it's not easy to compare directly, it's not straightforward. So I will plot this graph a little bit in a different way. Why now? The X axis represents electron per iridium and both or iridium oxidation state. Iridium can oxidize from 4 plus to 5 plus. This is normalized by content of iridium. Then how we can access, how we can delete it for the lithium in this Graph, it says that iridium should be even oxidized further beyond 5.5, even beyond 7. So we can assume, we can uh, hypothesize by team looking, iridium should be further oxidized to see what is going on. But uh, 7 plus oxygen state is really high. To confirm what is going on in, the, in this material, we did a DFT calculation. And this is a schematic or specific site in the lithium excess. This is, by the way, plan B. This is a transient metal layer, and there are lithium, uh, sorry, uh, there is iridium, tin, and oxygen. And this is even simpler model. Iridium has right now 5.5 oxidation state. So remember that right now we already deleted lithium quite a lot. There are lots of lithium vacancies. If we want to delete more lithium, iridium first oxidizes beyond the 5.5. Immediately, this more oxidized iridium promotes team element migration to the lithium site. It's possible because there are many lithium vacant sites in that. After this one leaves the lithium site, those three electrons become unstable. So at the end, with the vacancy after this team leaves, those three oxygen becomes stable and form potential metal oxygen bond, a short bond and oxygen oxygen short bond. This is one of the examples uh, in this structure. There are more possible ways. This is one of the examples. And here in schematic we can see the bond length between oxygen and oxygen in this case after this team move. Sure, this is what we saw before. I want to remind you once again. This one is what we observe in the peroxide material. And this peroxide species in the simulation shows a specific feature in the risk map. If this simulation is true, oh, by the way, uh, I mentioned the importance. After this one happens, the actual calculation shows that the whole structure is more stabilized. If this one is, uh, so let's check whether we can see uh, this peroxide species after kin migration. Uh, let's go back to this graph and we confirm that this, this region is, comes from ocean oxidation. Then, at the end of the initiation of uridium 75 and tin 25, uh, it's not right, but there is isolated feature in the risk map. And with rich better refinement, we found that there is 5.1% of transient metal at this site. If there is no oxidized oxygen, no transient metal. If there is oxidized oxygen, there is change in the equation. This tin 50 into 50, there is more oxygen capacity, and we could see even clear, more stronger feature in the risk map. So let's quickly, I will skip the summary in my first part. With two materials, uh, uh, first, uh, lithium is an MSC material, I found reversible change in migration and oxygen reduction. And together with the lithium is an energy material and lithium is an oxide material, we confirm 
both elements show strong correlation between tension and migration in motion levels. We can say feature like this, strong correlation between tension and migration in motion levels. In the team review system, by changing the structure, by team doping, we can say structure changes motion level and tension and migration. Then in the second part, I will say how we synthesize, we optimize synthesis condition control structure and property. In team rhythm system, we found changing the structure to the property, and doping is not the only way to change the structure. With my last model system, lithium excess blue and blue side, I changed the synthesis condition other than doping to change the structure. Before showing the structure, I will show first basic electrochemistry of lithium blue and oxide. This is the initiation of leucine oxide synthesized at specific temperature at 1,075 degrees Celsius. Without specific mention, from now on, I will cycle, I will initiate and initiate all the leucine oxide at the same condition, 30 degrees Celsius and C over 12. If C over 12 means I initiate to lithium within 12 hours. With X, again, with X-ray, oxygen spectroscopy, and the Rick's map, we observe the same oxidize in the beginning, and oxygen goes oxidize, and we conform with this Rick's feature. There's also peroxide species. We found a very really interesting feature here when I increase the synthesis temperature to 1175. With X-ray, oxygen spectroscopy, we found that leucinium also oxidized from 4 plus to 5, point, uh, 5 plus up to this point. But this region, oxygen without capacity, goes down, uh, is shrink so, so much. So here, you can say changing the synthesis condition, change the structure, and may affect the property of oxygen without capacity. For the details of the study, I took uh, more steps of temperature from the two temperature. From the lowest temperature, I increased since its temperature by 25 degrees Celsius from 1100, uh, 1125, 1150, up to 1200. Systematically, we can see uh, capacity up to about 160, they don't change their feature. But after that point, it changes systematically, it, it drops. If I say the uh, capacity up to this point, but about forward, I can say this is capacity from leucinium riddles. And capacity after that may come from oxygen riddles. So I can plot the capacity in this way. By increasing temperature, here, the diameter, the diameter of this blue semi-circle indicates oxygen riddles leucinium resource capacity for the material at different synthesis condition, and diameter of the lens semi-circle indicates oxygen levels. We can see cation below capacity doesn't change, but oxygen below capacity changes a lot. And this is oxide material, and we know that changing the temperature in the oxide changes the concentration of vacancy. In the materials in the material science, we know that at elevated temperature and uh, entropy contribution becomes more dominant. Then there is another way to control the vacancy changing the pressure ocean pressure during synthesis. So this is a starting point. This is a uh, pressure ocean pressure 0 0.21 atm. This is the snowmark atmosphere, 21% of ocean. I reduced pressure ocean pressure 10 times each step, down to 0 0.0002 atm. And I even increased pressure ocean pressure to 1 atm. Here, I flow to pure ocean gas. You can see also another systematic change of the capacity only after four volts. <coughs> I can plot in the similar way. Cation capacity and ocean capacity. Here I put the axis at the low scale of here too. Cation with those capacity is not affected by changing much ocean pressure to the synthesis. Only ocean with those capacity changes. If I put this Partial pressure series and the temperature series in the same map, I can draw like this. Here, as axis represents 
the law of partial ocean pressure during synthesis, or F to be general. The temperature. We can see can higher resource capacity so does not change that much. But actually those capacity changes systematically in both directions. And here we can say we can get more and more oxygen redox capacity if we go on a much direction by reducing synthesis temperature and increase partial oxygen pressure. Uh, I mentioned uh, the motivation was oxygen frequency, but I will, make, uh, I will show another factor that affected by changing synthesis temperature. The easiest and straightforward thing is particle size. As I can, we can see in the SDM image, particle size is getting bigger and bigger as we increase the synthesis temperature. This is not surprising in the material science. This is a uh, uh, frequency observed. If I plot the average particle size together with standard deviation, you can see it goes up systematically. Then what, how, what is the effect of partial ocean pressure the particle size at different partial ocean pressure in the SCN image, there is no significant difference at two extreme <coughs> conditions. If I plot for the same way, if I change partial ocean pressure, particle size increases slightly, but uh, there is no uh, big changes, unlike, uh, unlike the temperature. So here we can say one of the main factors affected by changing the synthesis condition, particle size, is not a main uh, factor that indicate ocean oxidation capacity. Not only particle size, we also did research uh, analysis on the stacking fault, how much stacking fault is there, and what is the anticipated effect in the present state. They are also another indicator to estimate partial ocean pressure. They, many of them are only effective by changing synthesis temperature. Then I can put the particle size changes like this. But the size is mainly affected by changing temperature, not partial ocean pressure. Then, let's talk about ocean latency, one of the maybe the most important things. <coughs> uh, this is oxide material. Oxygen and the oxide can, uh, uh, can uh, do, uh, yes, uh, oxide material can do uh, oxygen exchange with the oxygen gas outside of the environment. If, if there is, the partial ocean pressure goes down, the oxide tends to lose the oxygen as oxygen gas. And at the same time, it generates oxygen vacancy. And for the trash compensation, it produces another type of defect, like delocalized ball, localized up, uh, delocalized electron, localized electron, and another type of vacancy, like a shocking defect. And I put, I pick one of the examples. Oxygen turns into oxygen gas and produces oxygen vacancy, and that is uh, translated by localized methane. Uh, here, I will I measure uh, X-ray absorption near the spectroscopy. This is uh, part of X-ray absorption spectroscopy, and this is a good way understand the oxidation state of each element. If a specific element has a reduced oxidation state, the X-ray uh, absorption spectrum shifts to lower energy. And let's see how the spectrum changes. As we are interested in the ruthenium element, I made a ruthenium KH. By changing partial oxygen pressure, you can see some changes, but not that different, so I magnify this region, and we can see by reducing partial ocean pressure during synthesis, synthesis to this uh, green color, it shifts to lower energy. Again, shift to lower energy indicates reduced oxidation state. Lucenium is being reduced. And more reduced lucenium is another evidence, one of the evidence of ocean vacancy. Then what happens if we change this temperature? I also change the temperature during synthesis. Again, let's magnify it here. It also shifts to the lower energy. The green is the highest temperature. Yes, the green uh, line is uh, shifted to that. It means if we also increase the temperature, we also 
produce more ocean vacancy. So, in this map, the ocean vacancy should inverse automation. More ocean vacancy, with more ocean vacancy, we have less ocean resource capacity. Then, what could be other factors that affect and change it by changing the synthesis condition? This is electrochemistry of uh, different at different PO2. I put everything in the same graph because it's clear there's no change of the cation uh, uh, cation to capacity up to this point. It changes a lot. And I measured structure at this point. I think that point is important because that is the point where it starts to show ocean flux. And by changing pressure ocean pressure, this is the corresponding capacity, this area, at this length. And we found that volume should inverse the relation. If ocean, without, uh, ocean capacity becomes larger and larger, the volume it shows, uh, it shows the lower volume. If I put those two tables in the graph, I can say like this. If the volume increases at 3.9 volts, ocean capacity goes down. It shows inverse relation. And I show the relation of the capacity and the volume in the PO2 series. If that is true, then what happens in the unit cell volume in the temperature series? And this is a measure. This triangle is for PO2 series of the volume and the capacity relation. The temperature series also for the same line. It shows inverse relation. So you can say the unit cell volume also has inverse relation portion of the capacity. Then here we can estimate there might be some correlation between unicell volume as 3.94 and ocean capacity. We did TFT calculation together with my collaborator team. At 3.94, this is a structure at 3.94. This is a decennium and this is a And we introduce ocean vacancy. We remove those three auction and the vacancy. And we can say, we can here, we found the, uh, from ideal structure, the volume has increased by introducing more ocean vacancy. Here, I want to say that this is not conclusive. There are so many things changes affect the of calculation. So I want to say this is conclusive and one of the ways uh, that have clue there is a uh, relation between ocean vacancy and the volume of the exam. So more ocean vacancy may increase the volume of the so let's conclude the by finding so far up to the second model with the uh with the region team oxide, we found the strong correlation between tertium and migration, auction middle, middle structure. With my last model system, the two same oxide, we found this changing the success condition, changes the defect, and also changes using auction middle and tertium metal migration. Here I can assume high ocean vacancy or large volume of unicell prevent prevent transition metal migration. That's the reason why it shows lower ocean capacity. But we found another interesting phenomenon. This is again the sun state electron chemistry and I put uh, this green one so it lose the PO2 separate. I mentioned that I cited that at 30 degrees Celsius at C over 12. I Elicited that during 12 hours. I floor the decision like C over 76, C over 60. I even did some extreme cases, C over 200, as only negotiations. It means I elicited it within 200 hours, probably nobody wanted. But <laughs> I want to increase the kinetics by increasing the temperature. You can see we could get more and more ocean capacity by slowing down the process. So this indicates ocean redox capacity is not only determined by structure, but there is also a lot of kinetic factor, factors in the ocean redox. So let's summarize my second part with my previous slide. From my uh, 
from this uh, from my first part, I found this, and by changing the CCS condition, temperature and PO2, I changed the concentration of defect oxygen vacancy. And two slides before, uh, and I found there is a strong relation in the kinetics. And two slides before, I said it like this: high oxygen vacancy or large volume of cell prevent transmission migration. But I would like to say it another way. High ocean vacancy or large volume slower transient metal migration. And here comes the question why is slower transient metal migration? In, up to, uh, to this point, we need a further study, but my hypothesis is that some vacancies stabilize transient metal at this alternate site and may increase the activation barrier of migration. This is one of the hypotheses. This is my last part. I will show how to increase the performance of the battery. By increasing, since it's the temperature, we observe larger and larger particle size. In the battery society, to make a real battery, making a larger particle is desirable. With less surface area, we can use less power plant and the binder, and we can have more and more capacity. As I mentioned in the earlier slide, in the electric vehicles, volumetric density is really important. So many uh, companies try to get larger and larger particle size by increasing temperature or optimizing temperature. But as you can see in the case of lithium lutein oxide, there's a trade-off. Not only lithium lutein oxide ch uh, changing the ocean capacity by changing, since its temperature is also observed in other lithium lutein material. So if I'm uh, uh, that we make her, then may, I may optimize the synthesis condition by increasing temperature to here. I think get a decent uh, size of the particle, and also I didn't lose too much uh, ocean capacity. So there is always trade-off in capacity. But we know that if we wider synthesis condition, not only one dimensional temperature, but two dimensional, also including partial ocean pressure, you know, we found that particle size is mainly a function of temperature and oxygen does capacity go down by lower temperature and increasing partial ocean pressure. So we know this is optimal condition for the better performance of the uh, battery in the synthesis condition, in the synthesis stage. I will show another way to improve the performance of the battery other than synthesis. After making a battery. This is again a little chemistry of the lowest PO2 shows less oxygen capacity. And this is a more oxygen capacity with extremely slow DVC. Probably but nobody you know but no one uh, wants to uh, charge the battery within that low time. We can say we can get more oxygen capacity by slow initiation, but there's another one. It is called, uh, in the battery, it is called constant current charging, constant voltage charging. I apply constant current with the same rate, like C over 12, at 4.5 volt, and I put it on voltage. The current goes down, and you can get more and more capacity. You can see, in the initial capacity, it is huge. If I put this grid and red separately, this is the same cycling condition, but this is the battery without cooling, this is the battery with cooling, uh, sorry, uh, losing oxide with cooling without cooling. Let's see what is the following cycle. In the following cycle, we can see if we cycle the second, uh, if we do the second cycle in the holding material, we still get larger capacity. So holding effect does not go away. If we access oxygen capacity, is so this is a way how we can get larger capacity even that 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 material in the beginning. So I will plot in other way. Ah, uh, this is my favorite plot. Uh, <laughs> ocean capacity as a function of temperature and PO2. This is ocean capacity during first initiation, first charging. An important part is second initiation, the second discharging capacity. You can see. Uh, by the way, here I calculate ocean reduced capacity by just I just uh, my, I calculate the total capacity 
and subtract it. Cat M is just cat S because, because you say different examples away. You can see the first is deviation, second is deviation, but don't change that much. By the way, this is without pulling, just normal side. But if we do holding in the first deviation, this is what is the capacity of oxygen in the second deviation. See this one and this one mainly, this one increases a lot. So here I want to say that even though the battery shows bad performance in the beginning, and I know the Politically, there is a device in the that he says we can make all the batteries better by supporting this So let's summarize my talk today. With my first model system, this two meters and two material, we found strong correlation between serial meter migration and oxygen levels. With my second model system, the two meters with tin oxide, we confirm this phenomena and check. Structure also affect tertiary meta migration and oxygen results. With my last model system, we confirm the change in the synthesis condition, change in CO2, and temperature, change the defect concentration, and changes everything. And finally, we found not only the structure, structure changes kinetic and kinetic controls everything. In Back in 1999, the first, when first lithium ion battery was commercialized, probably at the time nobody could ex expect the development of powerful small electronic devices and electric vehicles. In 2019, you can see we need more capacity, but uh, we need more study uh, to commercialize this amazing lithium system material. I hope my study with my awesome collaborator will promote commercialize this material and also promote revolutionary invention in the industry. Thanks so much. Behavior and this kind of sloopy OTT behavior is constantly observed 
other two different materials auction capacity. Do you think that if you there are other materials besides ruthenium mm -hmm. that could have like better defect tolerance that could maybe provide an improved cathode Like some that like promoted even lower oxygen I haven't searched uh, the different formation and the different like, material. Or maybe uh, other simple simpler relationship like lithium excess magnesium oxide or one element, it might be possible to calculate what would be oxygen latency concentration and maybe it can lower to get more capacity. Maybe this is also an interesting study. Okay, so let's thank you. Thank you.
two groups. I had twice of the beers, twice of the party. It is, it is weird. Oh, sorry. Yes. It is, it is really fun. I really appreciate to all of you. It is really, my PhD was really fun because of you guys. And I also get lots of help from all the members. I appreciate it again. And other Korean friends. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say everyone one by one, but I hear your praise. Many of my friends, some of them are here. I had a really interesting time together with them doing about playing tennis and sports and you know, barbecue and everything. I may not forget this uh, enjoyable moment when I did. Thanks everyone. And <laughs> to my wife, I met her after I came here. She finished her PhD last year. She is one of the greatest supporters during my PhD. Uh, it is not, it is it's really nice to be in the same academia and engineering. It is easy to understand each other. But sometimes it's not easy because right now she's doing POSA in other locations. Hopefully, we can go to the same location and do it together. <laughs> <laughs> Last week? Thanks for your attention. <laughs>